Greetings, Bat Prince here, and today, Ms. Bat and I are reading The House mm -hmm. in Fata Morgan, Mor Morgana? Yeah. Morgana. What are you laughing at? Quite possibly. Why, what are you laughing at? You think you would have learned by now how to press all your buttons to no, be okay? No, because I changed to using the Streamlabs remote on my ah. phone, and the app just updated, and now all the buttons don't work anymore. That sucks. So I have to go back to pressing buttons on the keyboard. Fair enough. Nobody needs to know about that. They can <laughs> watch us read a book. <laughs> I like the hand. Yeah? Yeah. Enter the mansion. Do it. Version 1.3. Yeah. What? Nothing. Go! There is a house. You're gonna have to be louder than that. There is a house. That's better. Where is it? It's telling us that there that is. That sits oh. beyond dark, dense woods. Is there? Yeah. Okay. The so dramatic. end. Like the world fading into a few after a dream. Yeah, thanks. That old mansion appears before you. Is that just random whispering or are they reading it? Or is it songs? It's music. It's songs. Without really like whatever without realizing it. You instinctively accept as truth the events unfolding before you. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Is it? The house lives in perpetually an amalgam of my <laughs> my raid fates and generations. Did you get that? No one knows who first said. Said what? Oh, you just have to wait. That the mansion was cursed. Cursed? Cursed. Aww. Forever and ever and ever. Ta da! End of game. Hi. <laughs> right. We've got yeah, it some. Ah. Can we skip the credits? There we go. Skip credits. House in Fata Morgana. It's gone all blurry. My glasses okay. Yeah. <laughs> Our Father. Mm. Who art in heaven. Art. Hallowed be thy name. Yeah. Can you do the rest without reading it? Yeah, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us his death. No, nope, have, have mercy on you. me, O Father. You are wrong! <laughs> I know the other one. <laughs> And cast their souls into eternal damnation. Damnation. That's that's damnation. Nasty. <laughs> that's unfair. Why? Send them to the seventh circle of hell. Mm. Chain them to the I was freezing block. looking down block. upon a corpse. Thank you. I can click now. I think so. Yep. My own corpse. Oh man. I was afflicted with great despair. At the sight of being dragged to the place of my crucifixion, my soul crumbled, and I was wholly e extinguished. Yeah, like you were on fire, but yeah. your fire was life. Yeah. Indeed, I did once lose everything. However, as I faded into darkness everlasting, everlasting. I heard a voice calling out to me. And so, I found once more... That no matter how long it may take, how great the obstacles that stand in my way, or what form uh, you may assume, I shall come back for you, that I must return to that house. So I ask of you, please wait until the mult, uh, mult, mult <laughs> mutilated body arrives there once more. You tripped over the mutilated body? Yeah. 
fireplace. Dun, dun, dun. The consciousness, wavering like a ship at sea, was slowly drawn back to the surface. Tur. Tur. <laughs> With each new breath, feeling gradually returned to your fingers. Master. You could hear the pattering of rain from somewhere. Master. And the sound of crackling fire. Wake up, master. Creak, creak, creak. Wake up. When you come to, you are rocking back and forth in a rocking chair. <clears throat> the room was dimly lit. Aside from flickering in the fireplace, there was no other illumination. No light uh, shone through the closed windows. There was only a pitter patter of rain on the glass. It was as though the whole mansion had been enveloped in darkness. That's what happens at night. Yeah. Oh, splendid. You have finally awoken. Someone called out to you. You were about to search the room, but that turned out to be unnecessary. No treasure, no traps? No. The source of the voice was crouching beside the chair, looking up at you with emerald eyes. Dots. Mm. You go. You want me to be the, the lady? Yeah. Good morning, master. Good morning. Oh, we get to choose. You want to say good morning? Yeah. Said it. Hmm. Ah, oh, what is the matter? Are you still waking up? You seem rather drowsy. Come now, you must gather yourself. Though I am glad to hear your voice, I have simply been waiting for so long for this moment. Tending to the mansion all by my lonesome, ensuring it was ready for your return, whenever that time may be. Oh. When I caught sight of you through the window, my heart flooded. Oh. The time had finally arrived. You were perplexed. Oh. You were perplexed. This woman, who looked like a maid, seemed to have known you, but you had no memory of her. What kind of herbal tea would you like to start with your, that you... That's me! What kind <laughs> of herbal tea would you like to start a day with? Ooh. I have some wonderful chamomile leaves if you like. Oh, I like chamomile. Or perhaps your taste had changed since last we met. Tell me, master, what would you like? Aha, I beg your pardon. I allowed myself to get too excited. Aww. But I hope you will be sympathetic, master. I am just utterly elated that I could see you again. The woman appeared to be generally delighted that you had woken, but she seemed to lack energy typical of her age. Or perhaps life was more appropriate appropriate word than energy. But the gloom extended beyond the maid. It seemed to encompass the entire mansion. The plaster walls illuminated by the fireplace and rose engravings in the ebony pillars felt vaguely familiar. But a crushing sense of claustrophobia overpowered that familiarity. It seemed as though the house wasn't interested in accepting you just yet. Oh my... You do not know who I am. Do you not know who you are either? That is quite the predicament. If you cannot remember who you are, then who am I to serve? Oh, the woman's face was pale, almost as though she... A faint chill ran down your spine. You are the master of this house, though it would seem you have no memories of such. Quite the dilemma. If you know not who you are, then you are no different than a stranger to me, no? Indeed, you have returned, but from where? That I cannot say. Hmm. Then how about this? I am a servant of the mansion, and as such, I am familiar with the many incidents that ha have taken place here. In incident? No, I got that yeah. right. That's a weird way to explain it. I shall show you the history of the house, Master. Oh, yes. That will surely allow you to recall who you are. The freshly awkward gears in your head began to turn as you mulled things over. Awaken. Awaken. The maid had called you the master of this house. But without a single mirror in the room, you had no way of seeing what you looked like. Unable to decide, you uh, reflexively nodded. Let us be off then. And fear not, I merely entreat you not to let go of my hand. No. Oh. Should you hold it tightly, you need not worry about being washed away by the waves of history. Hmm. No matter what happens, you mustn't let go of my hand. Uh-oh. I like different portals. 
Your hand in hers, you followed the maid's lead through the hall. There within the mansion was oppressive, as though a black maid... Miasma. Mi miasma hovered within. The house is bleak and barren, hardly a trace of colour to be found. There's some. Yeah. You come across an open window. Beyond it lay nothing but darkness, neither sunlight nor moonlight could be seen. There was no chirping birds, no rustling grass, no signs of life at all. Everything that would normally have give colour to the world has vanished entirely. The only other presence was that of the maid. Following her lead, you proceeded through the mansion. After some time, you arrived to a double door, the glass within shattered. The door, once pure white, had long faded into a dull grey. It appeared to lead to the back garden. You could hear children laughing on the other side. Though it is in the state you now see it, a beautiful, beautiful garden once lay beyond these doors. The owner of the, of the time enjoyed gathering rare species of rose from all across the world. At its grandest, it seemed every flower was in constant competition for the most majestic bloom. Mm. Would you like to see this wonderful era of splendor and prosperity? Hee hee hee. I very much hope it is to your liking, Master. The maid opened the doors to the back garden. A sudden gust of wind brushed across your face, forcing you to close your eyes as you followed the maid out the doors. When you next opened your eyes, the world was no longer blanketed in shadows. The first door. Knock, knock. 603-1603 Move the cursor to the bottom right corner of the screen and display the in-game menu. You can save and load your progress. Yeah, I found that out. Do, 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 do. The mansion had an alluring air of beauty about in the era. It was almost like something out of a fairy tale. Hey all. The period of the history could perhaps be described as a symphony of uh, destruction, a uh, cumbersome principles of old came crushing down. Freed from the day-to-day -day oppression of the an an antiquated uh, precepts, the people seemed to hark back to the more poetic, expressive ways of old. They took these new blo newly blossoming emotions in hand and with them they wore literature, painted portraits, composed theatre and found love. Even the church which had ma maintained authority throughout the Middle Ages embraced the changing times adapted the culture's flowering sense of aesthetics. War would break out not 20 years from then, puckering the ripened era from the tree of history, but that is no concern of us now. At the time it was still what people prefer as the Golden Age, a period of fraud for all who were there. Oh, pretty. Now, let us take a slight detour. No, we will not be changing locations. This is a tale about the mansion from beginning to end. We will, however, be moving through time. Say, about eight years into the past. A very wealthy family lived in the house then. The mother and father, brother and sister, all of dis distinctive, beautiful fluxen hair. It was... I was always enamoured by their hair. By contrast, mine is the colour of wheat crow. Of a wet crow. Wet crow. See? There I am, standing around, looking rather a fool. Where? Where? I was happy back then. Where? And what reason did I have not to be... Um, afforded the opportunity to attend such a beautiful home. So I pounded my heart into serving that family. I poured my heart into serving that family. Listen closely if you would. A soft fleeting sound that could only be a young girl singing. Can you hear it? La, 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 la. <laughs> the girl you see cheerfully pricking, picking crimson roses and singing like a songbird called Nelly. Though young, she sang with elegance. 
Nellie was deeply fond of the house's garden and she would often spend her afternoons there. Gorgeous roses, roses gathered from all across the world bloomed in the garden. They were given the utmost care and even had their thorns removed. Well, so young Nellie would not hurt herself naturally. It's not real rose if it doesn't bite. The light brown haired girl carefully plucked petals from the roses, <laughs> gathering them up as she sang. Her voice was like music played by fairies. Nay, the sight of her was like an angel descended from heaven. Oh dear, please don't look at me like that. I admit I was being rather fanciful. But what is a woman if not fanciful, he he. Little bird, little bird, singing night and day. For your little birdie heart, sing your woes away. Pretty flowers all around, around the little birds. And even when the sun comes up, um... Oh, dearest Mel, I've forgotten what comes next. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Nellie was, as a matter of fact, not only visited to the rose garden that day. She always came with her older brother Mel. The young simples were inseparable. Mel adored his little sister, who in turn pined for his attention. The sight of the two innocent children cuddled together, not yet shackled by fear for the future, was truly heartwarming. That day, Mel was sitting in the uh, shade of the tree reading a book. Sure you are aware in the time, books could not yet be mass produced. What he was reading had been copied by a scribe. I presume he had borrowed it from the church. The book came passed through my head through many hands over many years, was visibly worn, but I suppose that just speaks to its importance. It was, in fact, a Latin grammar textbook he was reading. Mal was a clever boy. He had attended church from a very young age where a priest had instructed him in Latin grammar, so that in time, I believe, he was capable of reading even a fan's text. Oh, dearest Mal, please. The young girl approached her brother, who was consumed by the text. In her hand, she carried a large pile, uh, pile of rose petals. Mm. Mm. Though his sister's shadow overlapped the trees, the boy still did not notice. So Nelly puffed her cheeks, thrust out her, short, her slender arms, and let the petals fall. Ah! Ah! Ah, look at your head, it's covered in roses, Mal! Oh, Nelly, you got petals on the book. This isn't mine. I can't afford to let it get dirty. It's your fault, dearest Mal. I tried to get your attention. And besides, flowers won't get a book dirty. I I'm... must raise the white flag. When, when did my little lady find herself such a sharp wit? While waiting for you, dearest Mal. I waited and I waited and you didn't so much as glance at me. Aww. I'll be an adult by the time you're done reading that book. <laughs> wow, that soon? That soon. <laughs> Mother says girls grow up fast. Ah, she might be right. In that case, we should do something together before you're all grown up. Surely you won't play with me any longer when you become an adult. That's not true. I'll still play with you even when I'm grown up. But grown ups don't play, Nelly. Fine, I'll stay a child forever then. Didn't you just say you were about to grow up? Nah. You're so mean, Mal. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Please don't pout, my little lady. How about this? To make it up to you, I'll play whenever you want today. Okay. Well, that's enough of that. Aww. That's no, sweet. You're sweet. Thank you. Too sweet. I'll see you tomorrow. Huh.